want to thank you all for being here today. Um, I'm Tim Burchett from Tennessee's Second Congressional District, and we're going to have some uh, – the rest of the Congress folks are going to fill in here in a second. Um, next Wednesday, July 26th at 10 a.m., the House Oversight Committee will hold a hearing on, on unidentified anomalous phenomena, UAPs. I prefer to call them UFOs. It will be held by the Oversight Committee on National Security, the Border, and Foreign Affairs. The witnesses will be as follows. Follow. David Grush, he's a decorated former combat officer who served in Afghanistan, and he recently told the World News about his experiences serving on a UAP task force led by the U.S. Navy from 2019 to 2022. Commander David Fravor, he's a former Navy commander who shot the famous Tic Tac video that you've seen. It's on YouTube. It's 60 Minutes did a special on it. He did that in 2004 during a routine training flight over the Pacific Ocean. Ryan Graves, he's a former Navy pilot. Report, he reported multiple UAP encounters during training flights. And the interesting thing about, about Ryan was that he warned the Pentagon that these encounters are putting our pilots at risk. He attended the hearing held by the House Intelligence Committee last year, but was not allowed to speak. If you all remember, he wasn't even allowed admittance. He had to have someone gave him press credentials to get in, which I thought really stunk. Um, last year, the House Intelligence Committee held a hearing on UAPs. They brought in some Pentagon bureaucrats who, had, who only had two answers to the questions they were asked. I don't know, or that's classified. This hearing is going to be different. We are going to have witnesses who can speak frankly to public about their experiences. We've had a heck of a lot of pushback about this hearing. We've had members of Congress who fought us. We've had members of the intelligence community and also the Pentagon. Even NASA backed out on us. There are a lot of people who don't want this to come to light. I've even tried to introduce an amendment to the Federal Aviation Administration Reauthorization Bill, and all that would do would require the Federal Aviation Administration to report UAP sightings by commercial pilots to Congress. The intelligence, I was told the, uh, the intelligence community shut it down. This is ridiculous, folks. They either, they do exist or they don't exist. They keep telling us they don't exist, but they block every opportunity for us to get a hold of the information to prove that they do exist. And we're going to get to the bottom of it, dadgummit, whatever the truth may be. We're done with the cover-up. I want to introduce my friend Jared Moskovitz. He's a legal, he has a legal and an incredible analytical mind, and he's a friend of mine. Jared. Uh, thanks, Tim. Um, uh, good morning, uh, and I want to thank my colleagues uh, behind me that we're all leading this effort on a, on a bipartisan a bipartisan basis. And, and ultimately, you know, it really is about getting to just gov greater government transparency. As, as Tim said that, you know, when we ask these questions, if the answers are there are no unidentified aerial phenomenon, then say that. But that's not what the answers are. The answers are we can't tell you. And so that leads to speculation. And so this, this is something that has undoubtedly captured the public's attention uh, in multiple uh, administrations, and it's just finally time the U.S. government answer questions about what they know and when did they know it. Taxpayers are paying for programs that are keeping this information secret. They have a right to know where their dollars are going. Um, and with claims coming forward, as technology is getting better, people are capturing things on their phones now, right? We. We need to know whether these things are, uh, are they domestic, uh, are they foreign, or are they, are they something else, or do they not exist? And the government needs to have straight answers. And so the American people deserve to know the truth on this. Uh, unnecessarily censoring things or overclassification is what leads to all of these theories that have been out there. And so again, I want to thank uh, my colleagues uh, behind me for their leadership, uh, and we look forward to having a productive hearing on topic on a bipartisan basis. Thank you very much. Our next speaker will be Representative Luna. She's from Florida. She is a military veteran, her husband's combat wounded veteran, and I'm proud to have her on our team. Representative Luna. Thank you, Bridget. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. For decades. I was say she's with child. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Bridget. 
For decades, countless of Americans have questioned our government's lack of transparency regarding UAPs in our nation's airspace. These same questions have been echoed by many leaders on a bipartisan basis, from Jimmy Carter to Barack Obama, from Hillary Clinton to Donald Trump, from Marco Rubio to Chuck Schumer, from the former director of national intelligence, John Radcliffe, to current officials at the National Security Council. They have all called for disclosure of UAPs. If this was a court case, the court would be compelled to take up the thousands of testimonies, images, videos, and eyewitness accounts from doctors, pilots, scientists, and active duty service members. The status quo on the part of the U.S. government has been to leave the American people in the dark regarding information of UAPs. They refuse to answer quest questions post uh, posed by whistleblowers, avoiding the concerns of Americans, and acknowledging that the possible threat of UAP poses to our national security, as well as public safety, it is extremely unnecessary and an overclassification. If the last few months have taught me anything, especially in investigating this, it is that this issue is in the hands of the American people and they deserve answers. I just want to be fully transparent here. Myself, uh, Representative Burchett and Representative Gates had attended um, an Air Force base, and we were blocked not only by the Pentagon, but by the Department of the Air Force from seeing information, talking to witnesses. And after much arm twisting, we got some of the information. But the fact is, is that they answer to Congress and thus the American people. And every any government entity that attempts to stonewall us is doing nothing in the invested interest of the American people. When I take a face value, the numerous roadblocks that we've been presented with, it leads me to believe that they are indeed hiding information. I look forward to bringing this topic to light and finding out the truth of what is really out there. Next speaker will be Representative Burleson. He and I traveled to our southern border uh, a few months back, and we became really good friends. He has a really love for this country, and he, like the rest of us, would like the truth, and we, he agrees with us that we need a lot of transparency. Representative Burleson. Thank you, Tim. Um, thank you for spearheading this effort. I'll start out by saying that I'm a skeptic on a lot of stuff. Um, I come from a computer science background and finance background, so I tend to err on the side of things that I can see and touch. Um, and I don't, I don't give to into conspiracies. But too often, the federal government works outside of the public eye. And in conspiracies and rumors tend to flourish in places where the federal government is silent or not transparent. The American people deserve to know what their tax dollars are funding and what the government knows. That's just plain and simple. The other, th the other thing I think is important is that our service men and women who are risking their lives for this country and are encountering these devices, um, we, we owe it to them to find out what, what is in the air that might potentially harm their lives. When, what's disturbing is when you hear about the accounts of 14 near misses in air. Next week's hearing is about transparency. Like many Americans, I read David Grush's story when it first came out and watched the TV interviews. I was struck by the sheer amount of detail. So I was able to contact him and hear directly from him in a, in a, a, a lengthy phone call interview. And after speaking with him, I was convinced that the American people deserve to hear from him directly. That's why I asked Chairman Comer to hold this hearing, um, and I'm grateful that the chairman has decided to hold a hearing so that we can ask questions and get the answers that the American people deserve. It is time for transparency, and I'll say one more thing. It's the responsibility of members on oversight to do, this is our job. This is exactly what our responsibility is. So I'd like to th again thank Tim and my other colleagues for their leadership in putting this together. And I want to thank the chairman for his support. We'll answer your question. I, too, would like to thank Chairman Comer and uh, Speaker McCarthy, who have allowed us to do this. Yes, sir. Roger, good Just my, anybody. My, my question starts with you here. Okay. But tell us, walk us through what has happened. You say you tried to get information from the military. Yeah, so we were. And, and, and if others have other, you know, come, I mean, I mean, give us very specific things, what the inquiry was, what they responded, how you went back, and, and, and therefore what your thesis is what they're trying to cover up. Okay, well, and what Representative Luna and I experienced was um, uh, our colleague Matt Gates was contacted by some folks that said that some people would like to talk about some information, some things they'd seen, 
and we uh, we contacted the Air Force and we flew. We were told we were going to be briefed on this issue, the UFO, UAP. I like the UFO, and um, we got down there and it was the ch traditional skiff, James Bond stuff. You leave your phone, your Fitbit. We go in, and the synopsis had nothing to do. It was some pretty pretty big important stuff, but it was not to, anything to do with the UFO. And we stopped the thing rightfully right in the middle of it and said, hey, this is not what you all told us we were coming down here for. And they basically told us, we're not going to give it to you. The, the arrogance of this general was beyond belief. The this Pentagon, is Force, this is Department of the Air Force. It was the commanding, the oh yeah, of course. It was the commanding uh, general of Eglin Air Force Base. And ultimately, even before we got down there, the Pentagon actually tried to cancel the field hearing. And also, it's important to note that these were whistleblowers. These were pilots that had come forward to Representative Gates's office with information saying this needs to be investigated. We have an increase in sightings in this region. And it's a cause for concern for national security reasons. We don't know what it is. So we went down there. We were stonewalled. They would not give us access to testimony from some of the pilots. They were hiding images and information. We were told there was pictures available, which we still haven't seen. And ultimately what ended up happening is we had to actually call House Armed Services. Chairman Rogers got involved, the Pentagon got involved, the Department of the Air Force got involved. Um, we actually got into uh, an argument with the general of that base. And I just it's important to note that we were there simply to follow up on the whistleblowers that came forward with information. And so if the Department of the Air Force, if the Pentagon thinks that they're above Congress, they have something else coming to them. We told them we were going to do this if they continue to hide information. And ultimately, the American people deserve the facts. And also, I'd like to make, for the record, numerous pilots have told us, and I'm sure they've told Representative Luna, that the... Um, when, when they come forward with this, they're supposed to be provided some sort of whistleblower protection, but they're not. They, they'll, they'll, the, um, the brass will tell you they're debriefed. Well, they're interrogated for eight hours, I believe, at some point. And then they have a blemish on the record, and then uh, they carry this stigma. And we were, we've been actually told that they will destroy um, video evidence because they don't want to have to go back in and have to be pulled off the flight line for, and be interrogated for eight hours. One, one follow up. I'm, I'm, go ahead. If you, can go, go if you pay like, our salary, you go ahead. <laughs> if something like that out there exists, and there's something from another planet or another universe or whatever, and if they were to say, oh, yes, this is what we think it is, would we have riots in the streets? People Absolutely not. And that's, what, what do you think would happen? I think it's the arrogance of this, the arrogance of our government. Well, why don't that, you I mean, think that would happen to people? Would Why would it? Why would it? Over 55, more people believe in UFOs than believe in Congress. I mean, look at the polling that's out now. 55, 58, depends on who you talk to. They believe there's something else out there. And these are legitimate polls. I'm, I'm, I'm stopped every every weekend. I'm back in Knoxville. Man, I'm talking about educated people, professional people. I'm on airplanes. I'm traveling all over the country. People will stop me and tell me about an experience. Decorated veterans. These people, why would they risk their reputations and careers? over something that they're lying about. It's just, it's too big right now. And, and I don't believe they can keep their, 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 their thumb in the, in, in, the, in the dam too much longer because people are coming forward at too, too rapid of a rate. Yes, sir. Thanks, Tim. Um, is this one, is this issue, is this important because, I mean, Congresswoman Lewis and National Security, is this because like these UFOs or UAPs could be coming from China or another adversary? And second, you mentioned an amendment that didn't make it into the FAA reauthorization. So you said the Intel com uh, community blocked it. Did they go to, like, what was behind that? Did they go to the rules committee and say, no, do not have put this amendment in the FAA reauthorization? Right. Um, I'll answer the last one first. Um, it, that's a good question. We're not really sure. I was told the intelligence community blocked it, and then I was told that the intelligence committee blocked it. And it depends on who you talk to. I think that's your all's jobs as reporters to find out what the hell's going on with this stuff. Because you all need to start asking tough questions. And, and you need to start looking at people's financial disclosures as well. Because the groups that probably have control of this obviously are, are, are well healed in this. And, um, and, and, and your first question was if China or Russia. If Russia owned it, we, they wouldn't be battling in Ukraine. It'd be over. P Putin's ego. It wouldn't have happened. China, they would control us. Even they pretty much do now. But even more so. So, that that's that goes back to my original premise. It's either 
something from that's extraterrestrial or something that we that we have in our skunk works that we are reverse engineering because with this technology when you see the uh, the tic tac videos and listen to the pilots it defies all of our laws of physics the human body would not be able to stand the pressure from this thing it, it's it's beyond belief and some other stuff and that's why i wish they would release everything that that i've seen because it, it, the American public would say, why are you covering this up? I guess you could say, why are they still covering up Kennedy, the, the Kennedy assassination? There's nothing there. I mean, it's been over 50 years. Everybody's dead. This is about power. It's about control. It's about money. It's about greed and corruption. And that's what runs this country right now. And that's a disgrace. Okay, Tim, can I, can I add something Sorry, to that? Sorry, Go ahead. So, uh, again, I, I think the overarching question that we're really asking is, why are they overclassifying this? And why aren't they being transparent? You know, and... and it's about asserting, reasserting, I should say, Congress's role in all of this. I mean, to, to Tim's point, I mean, the United States Congress passed a law on the JFK assassination. That information under that law is now supposed to be available. And yet president after president violates of both, parties. Of both, both parties. parties, right, violates that law and extends the information. To his point, why? And that's really what's happening here. We, we're interested in the why. Why are they doing this? Why won't they tell the American people, yes, it's a national security issue? Of course it is, right? We, can't we tell the American people that it is in China, it is in Russia, right? And, it, and if it is, right, then that's even more questionable. Why aren't they telling the American people that other countries have this technology, right? And, and to your point, let, I, I want to re-engineer, re reverse your question, which is, it, are we okay with the federal government keeping information from the American people because they're trying to prevent us from having anxiety on all sorts of issues? I mean, if they can do it here, what else are, they, what else are we going to give them authority to not tell the American people because they're interested in, in, in controlling and keeping us in a bubble? I mean, that's a, that's a scary thought that they don't trust us, that the universe is a big place. I mean, everyone learns about that in school, right? The universe is a big place. Our solar system is a big place. We're learning about solar systems far beyond. And so the idea that human, the human brain can't tolerate that there might be life somewhere else, uh, I just don't accept that. And at the end of the day, I think the hearing is really about real life accounts from reliable people. And as the technology is getting better, our technology is getting better, we're now capturing these things on our handheld devices. And why is the military and the government not just being honest with us? Why are they overclassifying it? Why aren't they being transparent? Yes, sir. Uh, to if, if you'll indulge me. We, we've all heard about how there are uh, whistleblowers that have tried to come forward. Many of them, according to you all, have said that they have gotten backlash, that they fear coming forward. Some have even gone as far as to say that they fear for their lives in sharing these, these types of things. I'm wondering if you can just elaborate on some of what you're hearing as to like, the roadblocks they are facing. Sure. I mean, we've, we've had witnesses that have, that have backed out on us and have told us that they received inquiries, I guess you could say, from the Pentagon. And so, obviously, we're over the target, and, and they know it, and that's why they're firing at us. And if, if there isn't anything, then why the, why the push to cover it up? Why, do, why don't we know? All we want is transparency. Tell us what it is. And my second question is just at the hearing next week, uh, should we expect to be seeing new visuals in terms of video or pictures? of like physical, you know, craft that maybe we have not yet seen? Possibly, but I think what you're going to see is real questions. When the Intelligence Committee held that bogus commit, that bogus meeting in the public, I mean, literally, the people that they brought from the Pentagon couldn't spell UFO. That was the most ridiculous thing. I don't know if any of y'all saw that or not. They had one video where the guy filmed it out of his canopy with a cell phone, the most technologically advanced country in the world, and then Adam Schiff who I don't always agree with, but dadgum, he asked the question, and I loved it. He said, what exactly am I looking at? And they couldn't tell him, were they looking at the, the reflection off the canopy, or are they looking at some object that was flying by? It was a 22-second film. You know, the most technologically advanced country in the world, dadgummit, Isabel Burchett, my little 16-year-old girl, could have stopped that video. They couldn't even stop the video to show us what it was. And all the footage that we've seen, all the testimony, we had a pilot there who's going to be here who was denied access. That's a question the press ought to ask. Why is the intelligence community blocking everything we do, both parties? It doesn't matter who's in the White House. The American public deserves to know. Let's get to the bottom of it. So, I'm sorry, just to, to follow up on that, are you suggesting there are 
better quality images, better quality videos? I've seen better quality yes, videos, absolutely. dude. Absolutely, 100%, and they need to release them. You've talked about the bipartisan support for this. How fast can you get something moved along here in Congress and then ultimately have that declassification process and reform happen? It's like a glacier. I mean, you know, it, we get fight every step of the way. But I think the American public, and here's what's going to happen. A few of the big shots in Congress are going to get a call from some of their donors saying, hey, let's, let's get to the bottom of this. And then they're, they're going to start getting interested. We've had, I've had so many congressmen put a bug in my ear saying, man, I've had, uh, some of them have told me they've had sightings and they're afraid to say anything and they're glad we're doing it. So I think we're knocking, we're knocking the varnish off of it a little bit with this. Do I think, you know, we're not going to bring you in a saucer or a little green man. That's not what it's going to be about. And I know y'all, every time you play this uh, interview with one of us, you play the theme from X-Files. I get it. But the reality is the American public deserves to know. And what you, you better be careful about a government that doesn't trust its people because there's no telling what they'll pull on you. I'm sure Jared could say that a lot more eloquently, but. I yeah. did earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but I want to give Tim uh, a lot of credit going back to uh, some of your questions, which is this is a really simple hearing. It's about oversight. And I'm a and really simple guy. Is that what you're getting there? No, I wasn't yeah. going there. <laughs> but, but it was really hard for him to get this scheduled. It was hard for him to get it scheduled. It was hard for for uh, Congressman Luna to get it scheduled. It was hard to get a room. It was hard to get staff on board. It was hard to get approval. Every single step that they had to go through to make this hearing happen next week, the witnesses, they were stonewalled, and they had to push and push and push. Again, if there's nothing to talk about, why was it so difficult? And that, again, is what breeds these theories and these concerns. And so I think the best thing that can happen, quite frankly, just to, to end this whole deb debate, is just like, let's hear the testimony and let the government come forward and, and, and figure out what they have and share it with the American people. Anybody else? One, yes, ma'am. I think that it's probably going to be the start. What uh, Representative Burchett, myself, and my colleagues behind me have realized is that ultimately, um, as elected members and being assigned to House Oversight and Accountability, uh, we can conduct field hearings. And if we continue to get stonewalled, if we smell that they're giving us a bunch of BS, we are going to do the field hearings directly at those locations. And we're going to open it up to the press because full transparency really is what we need in this situation. And ultimately, to piggyback off of what all my colleagues have said, the military, the Pentagon, the intelligence agency, they answer to the people and thus Congress. And so we are going to hold them accountable. Everybody good? Thank you all so much. Thank Look you forward guys. to seeing you all next week.